Hey everyone, so today we're going to go through the coolest way, in my opinion, of how to mark a shinai or a bokken. So why would you want to mark a shinai or a bokken? Well, if you go to a dojo where everyone uses a size 39 shinai and they all look like, you know, bamboo shinai with four slats and a white handle, then it's pretty hard to tell which one is yours without some marking. And it's really easy just to get a permanent mark and write your name on the on the handle, but you know that's a little bit boring. So this is a way that you can put a design on a shinai or a bokken to quickly identify that it's yours. Now, getting a shinai or a bokken engraved is usually quite costly, and getting it painted is either even more costly or requires a lot of artistic skill. So this way, it's a really quick, easy, fast, cheap way to do it. So all you need for today is a shinai or a bokken that you want to put a design on the design that you want to put on it, an inkjet printer and some PVA glue. And all in all, it takes about 10 minutes of your time. So here's how we do it. All right, to start with, I like to measure the size of my paper to the size of the document on the screen. That way I know that the printed version will be the same size as it appears on the screen. Next, copy over your design and resize it until it's the size that you want. It's important to remember that your design will be transferred face down, so it will end up mirrored. So pre-mirror your design if it has writing or needs a certain orientation. Now I'm going to choose to print out a couple of copies so that I have some room to work with. Then we print it out from the inkjet printer. Fresh ink will transfer better to the PVA glue, so make sure that you have a fresh print. Next up, the transfer. So if you have a well-polished shinai, you might need to hit it with some fine sandpaper to help PVA glue stick first. Otherwise, on to the first step, just a dab of PVA glue, not too much. And, you know, I'll rub away a little bit and we'll apply it to the area that we want to stick our design. Now it's important to get a good spread and no blobs of glue anywhere. Then we take our design, ensure that we have the right orientation, and stick it inside down. And just dab it until the glue starts to soak through. And what I mean by that is that we'll dab it a few times and you'll feel the ink start to go through the paper so that we can just vaguely see our design through the paper and wipe off the excess glue from the outside. Now I've chosen to do the same to the other side of the shinite as well and you don't have to necessarily as well but you know if you want to do it to the other side repeat the same thing on the other side. Now it's important to realize that different PVA glues have different drying times. So generally they're between 18 to 24 hours for a full cure. So I've chosen to leave mine overnight. So we'll stick these down, we'll let them sit for a full night and then we'll come back in the morning. And when we do, then we'll come back and we'll hit it with just a little bit of water to remove the paper and that will leave just the design and the PVA glue stuck to the, to the shinai and we'll have a nice transfer of our design and the ink to the shinai. All right, so it's a new day and we're just gonna take just a touch of water, not too much, and wet the back of the design and just very, very gently begin to rub the paper. And don't use too much water or you'll wash away the glue as well. So just minimal water and use a tissue to wipe away the excess whenever you need it. And once more we can see our full design, then use your fingernail and scrape away the excess paper outside of your design. So let's have a look at how it looks. So there's still some residual paper, but you can clearly see the design through, and that residual paper will rub away over time. Now, if you want the colors to pop even more, you can give it a coat of clear nail polish, and that'll help the colors come through and give it a little bit of protection. But I've chosen not to bother with that for today. Alrighty, so how does this work? Well, basically we're creating a sandwich and removing the top layer of bread. So your shinai or your bokken acts as the base, we put a layer of PVA glue on there, and then we put our printed design on top of that face down. And what happens there is that there's a layer of ink from the inkjet printer if it's fresh, and then there's the layer of paper. And as the PVA glue dries, then what it does is it binds to the layer of ink, but it doesn't bind so well to the layer of paper. And so then what we do is then we wet it to remove the paper, and the ink will remain stuck to the PVA glue. And that way then you've transferred your design successfully to your shinai or your bokken. Now it's important to realize that this image will be mirrored compared to what you printed out as. So if you have a design that has writing, then pre-mirror it first. So now we get to the question of which side do you put your marking on? Well, Japanese katanas and swords have two sides, omote and ura. So omote means outside and the side that's facing out. And ura is inside, the side facing in. So when the katana is worn, 
then the side that is closest to your body is ura and the side that's furthest from your body is omote. Now historically when Japanese people wore tachi then it would hang with the blade down and then you know more modern times then when they wear katanas then the blade faces up. So omote and ura flip based on which side the blade is facing. Now if you were a smith making a sword and you wanted to put your signature on the tang then you would put it on omote because you want it to face out. And so you know a lot of people will say well then you should put the the inscription or whatever you're putting on omote. But if we look at horimono, which are decorative engravings on blades of swords, so not on the tang, on the blade, then they tend to be on both sides as far as I've seen. If someone's an expert in Japanese swords and can correct me on which side they should be on, then please leave a comment down below. But as far as I can tell them, they're supposed to be on, you know, they can be on either side because it's for a decorative purpose or to, you know, cover up some mistakes in the metal that have been that have been included while forging and in this way you can still raise the value of the sword. So you know given that we're putting on a design that's a crest in my case then I'm treating it like a horimono so I am putting it on both sides just because I think it'd be cool to have it on both sides. But you know for you personally then deciding which side to put on up to you. Put on whichever side makes you happy whichever side you like. Now the other question is is it allowed on a shinai that's going to be used for competition? And Truth be told, I don't do kendo, I don't do competitive kendo, so I have no idea. But looking at the um, Kendo Federation rules, then it says that a shinai has to be made of bamboo or a ZNKR approved synthetic material, and that there has to be nothing within the, the shinai except for the plastic tip at the top. As in, you can't pack it with a metal rod and you know smash someone and break the skull open. But it doesn't say anything about finishes, you know, colors, whatever. So. As far as I'm concerned, then, you know, from my perspective at least, then putting on this crest with, you know, a minimal amount of PVA glue and some ink is no different from you writing on your shinai with permanent marker. But if you're unsure, check with your dojo, check with the people who run competitions and see if it's allowed or not. And, you know, worst case, it can just be your training shinai and you can have a different competitive shinai. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope that you found it interesting. And if you're interested, take 10 minutes of your time, put a design onto a bokken, a shinai, whatever you want, and you know, you, you won't regret it. Because if you don't like it, then just run some hot water on it, remove the PVA glue, and you can start again from scratch. So with that, I'll see you next time.